Imran Khan is set to become yet another Pakistani Prime Minister who will not be able to complete his full term. And that is because he's not been able to manage the balance between the three A's that rule Pakistan. It's said that the three A's that rule Pakistan and it's the job of every Prime Minister, every government to balance their interests are the army, the most important, then Allah, which is the Islamic State and the Islamic Jihadist groups that operate inside Pakistan. And finally, America, which has been Pakistan's ally and in a lot of ways has been directing Pakistani politics for many, many decades now, definitely from the time when the Soviet Union went into Afghanistan, definitely for the last 40 years at least. Now, Imran Khan was seen as the Pakistani army's proxy candidate. And uh, there was enough evidence to suggest that when he became prime minister, when he was elected prime minister uh, in 2018, he was, he had a lot of support from the army establishment, from the ISI, and uh, he, uh, there were intimidatory tactics uh, run by the ISI and the Pakistani army against those who were opposed to Imran Khan. And Imran Khan, uh, the elections were rigged to favor Imran Khan to become the prime minister. And Imran Khan actually advertised his closeness to the army. He inducted uh, former generals into his uh, into his cabinet, he created a committee in which he put the army chief, General Bajwa, and he made him one of the important members. And the most important thing was that uh, when Imran Khan was elected and when uh, before that all the protests against the previous government, they were organized by the ISI. And there's evidence to suggest that they were done by a gentleman called Fez Hamid, who used to run one section of the ISI, which was meant for counterintelligence. And this man, Fez Hamid, was essentially very close to the army chief, General Bajwa. Now, uh, Fez Hamid was kind of lifted out of uh, a relatively mediocre army career and brought to the top by Bajwa. And then uh, he was made ISI chief in 2019 by Bajwa, overlooking others. Uh, the previous ISI chief was there for only eight months and then he was removed and Fez Hamid was brought in. And Fez Hamid was seen as a man very loyal to the army chief Bajwa and he was entrusted that role to essentially keep the government in check and also to uh, work out deals with opposition, keep them in check as well, work out deals with the various Islamic jihadi forces and groups which operate inside Pakistan and attack India, move into Afghanistan. So that was his basic role. Now, Fez Hamid is essentially someone who rose from the bottom. And he was one thing that uh, he was supposed to know well was how to handle politics. And also another thing that he was supposed to have is a lot of ambition. So very soon, General Bajwa realized that Fez Hamid was actually planning to become the army chief to create a clique which would be against Bajwa, force him to resign, re uh, remove him, and or at least take an early retirement and become the army chief in his place. And that is why what Bajwa did was Bajwa decided to replace Fez Hamid. He wanted to remove Fez Hamid from uh, the ISI. This is something that Imran Khan did not want. And there is uh, some rumor that Imran Khan's occultist wife, that's what Praveen Swami has written, uh, that uh, Imran Khan's occultist wife actually told him that if Ham uh, Faiz Hamid goes, then Imran Khan will find it very difficult to continue in power. And therefore, Imran Khan was very keen to have Faiz Hamid. This was the man who kind of organized his election, brought him to power. And what he did was he sat on the uh, transfer uh, file. The file which was sent to transfer Faiz Hamid, he sat on it. Normally, as Pakistan experts say, this should have taken at best 24, 48 hours, but he sat on it for weeks. And that created the first fissure between the army and Imran Khan. And the army rules Pakistan. It's not anyone else. And you should read this great book by Aisha Siddiqua. This is an excellent book called Military Incorporated. It's about inside Pakistani, Pakistan's military economy. This is a book worth reading because it tells you how much of Pakistan's economy and business and financial systems are directly owned and controlled by the army. Not indirectly by generals alone, but directly by the army. So the Pakistani army has not only a, a kind of vice-like grip on 
Pakistan's politics and external affairs, but also on its economy itself. So it's almost impossible for any prime minister, any political entity to go against the army. Yet each time, each time what happens is that when a prime minister gets elected in Pakistan, they think that they need to cut the army down to size. And one of the things they do is to do try a divide and rule. And this has happened repeatedly. Benazir Bhutto tried it. Uh, Nawaz Sharif tried it because of which he had to, he was actually forced to resign. And it appears that Imran Khan has tried it too. He tried to create a, a power center within the army, which would be alternate to uh, General Bajwa. But as Aisha Siddiqui has said and written, that there is one thing to play one general against the other. The other is to take on the army as an establishment. The army as an establishment unites. The army as an institution is larger than the army chief. It has been decided since the end of Ziaul Haq's regime that the army chief will become the representative of the army's ethos and what the army wants. So when you attack the army chief, the army institution takes it as an attack on itself and therefore uh, the entire army actually went against Imran Khan. Imran Khan has also done a few, uh, made a few mistakes because of his uh, uh, ego. Maybe that was her, his political calculations. He realized that Pakistan's army, despite its love-hate relationship with the US, is kind of heavily dependent on American support. And on the other hand, there is China wooing Pakistan, China putting in a lot of money, Pakistan being an uh, important part of Pakistan, uh, China's Belt and Road Initiative. And Imran Khan decided to look eastwards, right? He said that, okay, I don't really care about US. The US is not supporting me, not backing me. So he started looking eastward and he started playing to the galleries of the Islamic jihadist movement, which again is closely allied and controlled by the ISI, by the way. So he was, he was trying to see how to deal with this by keeping some members of the ISI of the army on his side. And one of the things he did was he took uh, the side of the Taliban in the UN, which angered uh, the US. They didn't want that to happen. Then uh, there was a kind of uh, Imran Khan's attempts to uh, form a bond with, let's say, the US, with uh, uh, President Biden didn't work out. Biden apparently refused to have a phone conversation with him, which again affected Imran Khan's ego. And what seems to have been the last straw for uh, the US administration, for the army, which wants a good relationship with the US, is Imran Khan's decision to visit Russia. He went to visit Russia, he started talking about deeper ties with Russia, and he visited Russia on the same day that Putin invaded Ukraine. And that turned out to be a miscalculation of sorts, and which seems to have united the American administration, which is now openly against Imran Khan and Imran Khan now is openly against the US administration. He has said he realizes that he has to go, but he wants to prepare the ground for a, uh, for a emotional campaign when elections are called, if elections are called. And the US army, the uh, Pakistan army doesn't want to alienate the US right now, however much it might have uh, tied up with China. So Imran Khan's calculations have been such that now the Pakistan army has turned neutral. When it turns neutral, till now it was openly backing Imran Khan. Since last year, after the fallout with uh, Bajwa, the Pakistan army has withdrawn, supposedly. When it withdraws, it opens the door for the opposition. Right? And the opposition is no longer, the Pakistan army and ISI will no longer play the government's role of, uh, of uh, you know, stamping down the opposition of all the arrests that have taken place and because of that Imran Khan now finds a united opposition and a part of his uh, coalition and his own party have switched sides and moved away from him. So he is clearly not going to survive a confidence motion. A last minute deal is apparently being worked out between him and the opposition that they will withdraw the no confidence vote and he will uh, call immediate elections. Now, that is what Imran Khan is preparing the ground for. But this is a very interesting moment in Pakistan's history because Imran Khan appears to have not only challenged the army, but also the third A in the entire lot. He's not only challenged the army, the army has turned, he's challenged the third A, which no one till now has recently done. So he's challenged the third A, which is America. He's saying America has a direct role 
in pulling him down and working against the interests of Pakistan. This is an interesting time for Pakistan, for Pakistani democracy, whatever there is of it. And also a tightrope walk for the Pakistani army, which will actually want to uh, tamper down all the uh, all the rhetoric that Imran Khan has built up, the anti-India rhetoric. It will want to want that to be dampened because it wants a slightly stable space within which it can continue to control Pakistan. That's the show today. Keep watching News Click. Subscribe to us, like this video, share it as well.